Hey Geeks, what's going on? My name is Brandon. Welcome back to the Geek XP. We recently got a new Steven Bomb of episodes, which I had no idea was happening, and then it happened, and so now I'm playing an infinite game of catch-up. But let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into our first review for the first episode of this bomb, Dewey Wins. So as a quick sum up, Steven has recently returned to Earth from Homeworld, and the gems are paranoid, and Connie's upset. Steven can't seem to figure out why, but that is distracting. Uh, what distracts him is that he finds out that Mayor Dewey has a new opponent in the mayoral election, and that is Nanapwa! Nanapwa is basically running on a platform of, Mayor Dewey is not doing his job right, we should have someone who does. Which is really a good platform to be running if you really feel like your mayor isn't doing anything for you. Steven likes Mayor Dewey for some reason, he's held him out in the past before, so he feels inclined to assist him because he feels that the main allegations of M Mayor Dewey being responsible for a bunch of people being almost kidnapped, except for Lars who was kidnapped, by a bunch of space creatures uh, is not really his fault, it was Steven's fault and he should have let him know, so Steven feels that he needs to help set the record straight. Steven works with Mayor Dewey to try to help alleviate some of the pressure on him, but it doesn't seem to work, so Steven works with him even harder to try to make sure he wins this election. Steven and Mayor Dewey stay up all night working on a speech for a uh, sort of debate between him and Nanapwa, um, and they stay up all night, but during the debate, Nanapwa whips out some great speech. Uh, we're talking about how it needs to be active, how everyone needs to work together for the benefit of the town, and it's great, and Mayor Dewey gives up in the race, right there on stage in front of everyone, and Steven is aghast. Uh, and talking to Mayor Dewey, he talks about how, you know, we tried, but, I mean, look, she's way better for this. It was the right thing to do. I'm sorry. And it is in that revelation that Steven realizes that what he did in giving up himself to the Homeworld Gems and leaving uh, the rest of the Crystal Gems and Connie behind is very similar. And so he sort of feels betrayed and wants to try to make it up to Connie, but she doesn't pick up her phone. But that is where the real meat of this episode is in, uh, in, and now that we've summed up the episode, I'd like to dive into that, because I think that's the real core of this episode. Overall, this episode does a cool job of introducing to us the consequences of Steven's actions in the previous arc. In a previous episode, I talked about how I thought that while Steven giving himself up was very selfless, very brave and heroic, was actually a really dumb idea. Let's not talk about in terms of Connie is emotionally hurt because of his decision, and I believe entirely she is in the right in this. Steven goofed. But just logistically, I'll revisit my point in that Steven's plan was to give himself up to right the wrongs for Rose Quartz's crime of shattering Pink Diamond, with the goal that it would cause Homeworld to leave Earth alone as well as the rest of his friends, and everyone would be safe, and he would pay the price for his mom's actions. On paper, it sounds great, but when you delve into it, we talked about earlier how Homeworld, and especially Yellow Diamond, wants to destroy Earth almost out of spite. I would say entirely out of spite because of what it represents, that failure to colonize this world, that it was the place of Pink Diamond's defeat, that it was something precious to Rose Quartz, and that even if she's no longer around, destroying Earth is a matter of principle. Like, Blue Diamond is still distraught at the loss of Pink Diamond. Yellow Diamond seems sort of peeved at the injury to the homeworld's ego. And so, even if Steven was to give himself up and be found guilty and executed or something, I still think homeworld would have come back and all of his friends would have been destroyed anyway. And even so, we found out that in during the trial that it might not actually have been Rose Court. So Steven was working off of inaccurate information. That's not really his fault. Everyone, including the Crystal Gems, was sort of reinforcing that information that he had, so we'll give him a pass on that. But even logistically, his plan, while selfless, was stupid. So now we delve into the reason why Connie's upset and the real core to this episode being Steven realizing how he acted foolishly on account of his father, the Crystal Gems, but primarily Connie. And Lion. Connie brings up the point that, you know, she believed in them, the, the pair of them, as a team, about being jam buds, about Stevani being, you know, what they could do to fight against this together because Connie really worked hard to become part of the Crystal Gem family, become part of that fighting force. She trained really hard, she's been with them through thick and thin, and she wanted to be there for that, and then when it came down to that critical moment, Steven decided to give up. 
he decided to not believe in what they could achieve together and focused on what he could do as an individual. This, I think, is due in most part to the way his character art has developed and the realization of his importance in the world of gems, the uh, legacy his mother left him, the magical destiny before him, which is something that Connie has encouraged. But I think what that has done is fostered a sense of self-importance within Steven, that he needs to be the one to decide these things, um, that he needs to be the one to make these selfless acts, when in reality, from day one, and something that Rebecca Sugar has done very well, is shown that even our main protagonist gains their uh, acts of achievement through the combined efforts of the entire ensemble. In the very early episodes, most of the episodes were about Steven getting into trouble and the Crystal Gems bailing him out. And then we had the cool turnaround where Steven saved the Crystal Gems during the initial invasion with Jasper and Peridot. And that was a really cool turnaround, but now, Steven, I think, has the impression that it's up to him to do this all the time. When now it says, okay, now the Crystal Gems and Steven and Connie, we all support each other now. And that's something I think Steven has lost track of. You know, he has that line just like, it was a tough decision, but it had to be done. He, and which he still obviously doesn't understand why Connie's upset. Connie's upset because, you know, she thought she was part of something bigger, that she thought that she and Steven were a team. And Steven just sort of revealed that, you know, he still, you know, or maybe not he still, but he sort of thinks himself as the star player. I don't think he realizes that Steven's not a selfish, self-centered person. He wants to protect his friends, but is inadvertently acting like a pig-headed man. Which my sex does a lot. So, props for coming into your manhood, Steven. You're a d like the rest of us. So Steven is sort of left scratching his head as to why Connie's upset, and I am totally on Connie's side in this. You know, I think what Steven did was, was selfless, but like I said before, logistically dumb and also emotionally damaging for Connie and his relationship with Connie. I think that's a really cool element to show the consequences to his actions. I think Steven has done a lot of things that have panned out in the long term, and this will probably pan out too, but I think it's good that we're having this element of his decision making, a slight hiccup in his path to what I think is still a magical destiny towards leadership. I think it's important for him to have these stumbles and falls. And I think making it personal for Steven is great in terms of the writing because for Steven, you know, the reason why he does most of these things, his personal motivation is almost always entirely a emotional on, uh, on an emotional or relationship level. He usually resorts to relying on his emotions for most of his decisions, and in the, for the most part, through the show's history, to his credit, that has done him well. But in this one regard, he has ultimately failed him, and you know maybe it's the, the human male part of his brain that has not allowed him to empathize with Connie's point of view until the very end of the episode. That's actually one part that I wish they had done slightly different, um, if they had something else to distract Steven, but the show in the past has done a really good job of organically letting characters come to realization and solutions to their problems over time. Uh, a lot of shows do, you know, that you resolve your problems in a 30 minute bit. Um, Steven Universe is still doing a good job of having those solutions be resolved over a period of time, but I think, and it's part of the entertainment business and you gotta tell your story, and it's gotta be paced out, um, but for Steven to so succinctly realize the error of his ways with such a perfect one-to-one -one ratio analogy scenario with Mayor Dewey where the, where the roles are switched, where Steven was the one who believed in the team of him and Dewey, and when Dewey gives up for valid reasons, but still sort of lets Steven down, it seems so close and similar in such a short turnaround period that, you know, I get why it was done, but I just kind of wish they had let that stall out a little bit more because the show has done a good job of letting these characters develop organically over time like real humans and it takes us a bit longer, I think, most of the time to realize when we've been pig-headed or uh, non-empathetic, for lack of a better term, which I'll look up later and put on the screen, uh, when it comes to those that we care about. And we're left at the episode sort of concerned, like Steven is. He doesn't know if 
Connie will get back to me sort of waiting, and I'm sure many of us have been at an era room where there's someone who we care about, who we want to talk to, whether we want to make things right or just talk to them, hear them, be acknowledged by them, and when you get nothing back and you're sort of left, well, if I keep pressing, then I'm clingy, but if I don't, then, you know, they'll think I don't care, and I do, and so now Steven's sort of stuck in this, which is where we get into our next episode. Overall, I think this episode was great. We got to see Sadie react to the revelation that Lars is still in space, although we still haven't seen her react to pink magic and also more responsible Lars. But she still very much cares about him, even after his abandonment of her at the hands of Topaz. I'm still excited to see the return of Lars and Sadie's reaction to that, but we got to see that element. And we are I'm sure we were all very interested. I'm sure most of you already seen the rest of this bomb. Uh, about how Steven deals with the rest of the consequences of leaving Earth and then coming back. Let me know what you guys think about the episode, though. Leave it down in the comments section below, whether you guys liked this episode, if you had some, uh, not gripes, I feel like gripes is a, a heavy term. But let me know what parts you liked, if you are on Steven's side, you think he still did the right thing, or are you on Connie's side, and that, like, Steven just was sort of being a dummy. Like this video if you enjoyed my review, and uh, subscribe for more future content. There's a bunch of Steven episodes that came out recently, so I'm going to try to bang out these reviews. Thank you guys so much again for watching. You guys have been Wards and Geek XP, and until next time, stay geeky, my friends.